the idea is to take a single photograph of a face, and as output, we get a 3D model in volumetric form. Where do you start doing something like that? This kind of thing is becoming more common now with uh, CNNs. You can give them a problem and just let them try and solve it. This is convolutional neural networks, right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, the idea is that, uh, so as the image comes in, we apply some filters. Um, the values of these filters are learnt through gradient descent, and Mike has a video talking about that. This is just a research project then, yeah? Yeah, so uh, of about eight months, um, and we decided it would be quite fun if we release uh, kind of an online demonstration, main, mainly so people didn't have to run uh, the code on their own computer because you have to install all sorts of dependencies and you need a, a GPU. And um, yeah, this is a, a much easier way. You can just upload a photograph and as an output you get a 3D mesh which you can rotate and play with. This is the object which you can download uh, and view in MeshLab. So if I also disable the colors, so this is the actual the, the object without, without any texturing applied. The actual mesh which comes out of the network is um, slightly higher resolution than this, but because of demand we have to kind of compress it a bit. In general it seems to capture things like the mouth and the nose. Oh yeah, you can try and compare. <laughs> Yeah, so it's running on one of the GPU machines that we have in the, in the group, and uh, I think at the moment it's processing maybe 80 photographs per, well, at a, at a time, uh, maybe 3,000 per hour. This is a photograph of your face, and we have, I'm gonna draw a magic box for now, and I'll try and fill it in in a bit. And so everything is coming this direction, and as output, we produce a cube. And this is a 3D volume made up of much smaller cubes, and in each one of these cubes the network regresses a value of 0 or 1. And then we use a, an algorithm called Marching Cubes which takes the surface of all of these ones and we simply send that back to the website and we use uh, the framework 3.js uh, to, to render it. So the magic box turns the, the simple image somehow into this 3D um, shape and then you basically colour it in with the, pic with the photograph, do you? Yeah, so the texturing at the moment is, is ridiculously uh, simple. So if you upload a, a side profile, it will actually take the, uh, the texture from, from the front of your face on, on the back. Uh, and you might also notice some distortion around the sides where it's actually included the, the background of the, uh, behind the face. But the, the, the problem was not to try and uh, improve texturing, it was to try and improve the the quality of the 3D reconstruction. It has good, good performance. And have you taken some of these 3D volumes and compared them to actual 3D scans just to see how close they are? Uh, or has it all been by eye? We, we did a lot of uh, testing um, and calculating of error, which is probably actually one of the most challenging problems uh, in, in, in doing this work. Um, the, the ground tree that we have doesn't have any details. You know, it doesn't show wrinkles or, or spots. Um, but the, the fit is very good to the face, so it, it should, you know, try and match the shape of the face. I've got to ask the magic question, which is what's going on in the box? So inside uh, we have an architecture which actually looks like an hourglass, and it's, it's called the stacked hourglass. So here we have the first part of the hourglass, and we have it upsampling again, and then we have a second hourglass. In here, the image comes in, the spatial re resolution as it passes through the, the convolutional neural network is getting smaller. Um, until we have something maybe 10 pixels by 10 pixels, so not the original resolution, which is closer to 200 by 200. We then upsample it, and while we're upsampling it, we actually have smaller hourglass networks, which are working at larger resolutions. So these come from a, an earlier point in the network. So as this is being upsampled, we're combining the result from these smaller CNNs. Uh, th this increases the, uh, the, the resolution around the side of the face, for example, uh, so that you have more detail. Uh, otherwise, you just get a blurry, blurry orb, basically. Yeah, so as you have these larger CNNs inside, these in increase the global context, so you know that the eyes are in the right place and that the mouth is below the eyes, for example. This then goes through another stacked hourglass network, which is identical, so it also has these smaller hourglass networks. And as output, we just take the 3D volume. So the hourglass there is taking a 2D image. So these smaller but higher resolution hourglasses at the sides, are they making the sides? How does it ex extrapolate it? In yeah, so 
It can actually be thought of as a, as a segmentation problem. So there's a lot of work on using convolutional neural networks uh, for segmentation. So if you take a single image, it will, it will give you a mask of uh, pixels and you give each pixel a number, um, with, with it being like a person or a dog, for example. Instead of regressing a single class uh, per channel as output, so if, you, if you're segmenting dogs and humans, you'd have two channels. Uh, in this case, we regress 200 channels, but they're all the same class, they're all the human face. So any time that you have a set of zeros, you know that it's part of the face. If you imagine a cube drawn around my face... Because you know I have to animate this now. Your face is now inside a cube. Yeah. <laughs> Slices inside a cube, and uh, if you chop my face up into smaller slices, you would see a set of wands any, any place that it is. So on the front, you would just see a few wands on the tip of my nose. As you get towards my ears, you'll see kind of, you know, just ears around a, an oval shape, I, I suppose. It's working out what features the 2D image is of, and then it's putting those in the right place in 3D space. Is that right? Exactly, yeah. So before we, we process the image, we first move the face so that it's in the same sort of uh, spatial dim dimension as, as the, the cube that we output. So the output of the 3D cube should be uh, spatially aligned perfectly with, with the face, which is why when you see it on the website, the, the actual volume is perfectly aligned, and if you have a slight rotation to your face, the, 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 the mesh will also be aligned with, with that. One thing I noticed was hair was uh, hit and miss. What's going on there? Yeah, so the training set doesn't contain any, any, any hair. It's, it's just the 3D shape of the face. And when we were producing the data set that we trained from, we actually didn't bother with the back of the head. It would be quite nice to have, have the back of the head as well. The problem is that since this is a volumetric problem, we actually have to produce these volumes, which means checking the voxels are inside the mesh or not. Uh, and that can be quite time consuming. We have some statistics which are, I've been watching continuously in case something crashes. So in the back end, we have uh, six queues. And at the moment, there are 67 images waiting in, across those queues. You can see that we've had 181,000 photographs uploaded. Uh, most of those have been since the 12th of September, and today I think is the 19th, yeah. Uh, so just in the past minute we've had 70 which have been uploaded, so that's why I feel sorry or bad for the, uh, the technical services. <laughs> At the moment there's so much traffic I don't want to just switch it off, and I, I would like it to be available for other researchers who want to try and look at our work. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I, I hope that we can keep it running. So. The reason why it doesn't work on the online demonstration uh, when you use a side pose is because the face detector we, we're using doesn't, doesn't recognize these faces. Uh, so instead of producing uh, horrible results, we would rather just make In it the look end, good. We basically. end up with a much smaller image and lots of features going all the way back. So these are my different convolutions of convolutions of convolutions of convolutions.